November 22nd, and we've been looking for rats. Found 13 so far, 11 of which are upstream of our falls. This is a typical red right here, created by a female salmon. You can see how she's moved the gravels from upstream, downstream, with the assistance of the current. The eggs are deposited right about here, probably between two and 3,000 of them. The eggs have got to be tough to withstand being covered with some gravel when she's done, but also they have to be permeable to allow the exchange of gases. If we figure there's been 13 reds that we've seen so far, conservative assumption would be we probably have at least 50 over the length of our creek. If maybe only five come back from each red as adults, that means we could in the future, in three or four years, hopefully have at least 250 fish come back assuming ocean conditions and climate are favorable. Tomorrow I'll go downstream and see how the female salmon that we saw in our first and second videos, if she's still there, how she's doing, she's probably aged quite a bit, and then in the next several days after that start looking for salmon carcasses. We've already seen a couple appearing as they completed their life cycle and are starting to die. Here is the coho salmon hen that we met in our first video. She also appeared in the second video. She continues to tend to her red a couple of weeks after spawning. She is close to death with depleted energy and a white fungus is ravaging her fins and skin. Despite this, she watches over her two to three thousand eggs. Somehow she knows to gently beat the water to force it down onto the eggs to oxygenate them. She will die soon and her carcass will drift downstream a little which will be the focus of our last segment as we search upstream of the falls for other carcasses in the next week or so. It's been several weeks since our last video. I'm upstream of the falls that we videoed several weeks ago, and so these fish have made it. And today I'm going to talk about salmon carcasses. So these are the fish that migrated upstream. Hopefully they spawned with the mate and subsequently they died. This is a fairly good sized coho male. You can tell by the hooked jaw here at his nose. And I think Winston Churchill said it best when the British had routed the Germans at El Alamein and he said, you know, this isn't the end. It's not even the beginning of the end, but perhaps it's the end of the beginning. And I think that's an apt quote here because as I try to explain here in a little bit, these carcasses will have a long lasting impact on the environment around us in this near area here. Salmon carcasses are very important, both for within the water and just within the riparian zone itself. And it starts with the aquatic insects that are in the water here. They'll scavenge this carcass, and I've seen caddisfly larvae completely enveloping a coho carcass like this, this male here. And uh, he's been dead for a little while, not very long, even though he's pretty coated in slime. And uh, that's important because these aquatic insects will then be eaten by the cutthroat trout and the coho fry and the steelhead fry that are in the creek. It also just as important as feeding the riverine food chain, we've got mammal scavengers that will also predate or scavenge these carcasses. For example, we've seen squirrels, weasels, bobcats, and even bears come and take these carcasses. So they perform a vital function to, to help us uh, sustain our wildlife here. But one other thing that people don't think about that has been found recently is that as these carcasses decay, and as the nitrogen and phosphorus-based nutrients get dissolved into the water, and as this carcass is caught by the large wood debris here, it just acts like a sieve and forces the water around, uh, it also forces the water into the soil along the banks. And for those trees that have roots near the banks or out to the surface of the, where the bank and the water meet, those trees will pick up these nutrients through their roots and help them in a big way. In fact, these studies have shown that up to 30% of an annual tree's intake of nitrogen and phosphorus-based compounds could be from salmon carcasses. So it's incredible. And when you think about these trees lasting perhaps for a thousand years or more, but particularly in the western red cedar, this three-year-old salmon has a major impact on that thousand-year-old tree. So these are very special creatures when they're alive and when they're dead. Thank you.